Today we are focusing on the bottom, in particular the group of gluteal muscles that give your booty its shape and functionality. Yes, believe it or not, your bottom isn't purely there as an aesthetic feature, it actually plays a very important role in walking and running. In actual fact, there's a positive correlation between strong, correctly firing glutes and running economy. So stick with me to find out why and of course how to strengthen your glutes. Your glutes work to keep your hips level every time your foot strikes the ground and they also work for forward propulsion when you're running and walking. Now if your glutes are firing correctly it's going to make you more efficient every time you to hit the ground so you're able to run for longer. And they're also going to reduce any chance of injury, so allowing you to train for longer and making you more efficient, it's a win-win. And talking of the propulsion phase, well that is really important, especially when you start running faster. So what exactly are they? Well, you might well have heard of glute max or gluteus maximus. That is the largest of the three muscles and one that makes up the bulk of your bottom and also is obviously the most well known. But we mustn't forget gluteus minimus and gluteus medius. I'm not gonna bore you too much with in-depth anatomy, but we've got a bit of an animation here to just help explain how the three fit together. Glute min or gluteus minimus being the smallest and the deepest sits underneath glute med and partly in front of it, but both are towards the side of your hip. And then glute med or gluteus medius is the next layer. And as you can see, it covers a larger area and sits slightly further back, but more superficially. And then there is the big one, glute max or gluteus maximus. Like its name suggests, it's the largest as well as being the most superficial and it sits more posteriorly. All three of these muscles work together to control the movement around your hip and combined they allow your leg to move outwards and in, so abduction and adduction. They allow for hip extension, which is when your leg moves out behind you, as well as internal and external rotation, basically rotating your whole leg in and out. But what does this actually mean when it comes to running? Well, having strong and stable hips is going to allow you to be much more efficient as a runner and also stay injury free. And talking of injuries, if you ever have been to the physio with some sort of lower limb injury, I can pretty much guarantee you will have at some point been told that you need to strengthen and activate those glutes. For example, if your glutes aren't firing properly, then you might find that your knee or your foot is rolling in slightly. That's causing your patella or your kneecap to not track. And then as a result, you end up with runner's knee. But if you want more info on runner's knee, we've actually got a video on that. So I'd suggest checking that out on our channel. And whilst you're there, why not give us a like and a follow? There are two issues at play when we talk about our glutes not working correctly. One is their firing and the other is their strength. And it's a good idea to address activation first. And there are a couple of really simple tests you can do to find out if your glutes are actually working properly. You've probably guessed, for this test you need to start lying face down on the ground and you're simply going to place one hand on your glutes and on that side you're going to try and lift your leg up in a backwards extension style of movement and hopefully you'll feel your glutes actually tense underneath your hand but isn't necessarily always so because our bodies are very clever at compensating and you can actually do that movement by using the majority of your hamstring instead of your glutes and ideally you want your glutes firing first and doing most of the movement. This test can actually be turned into a nice activation exercise. So keeping your hand on your glute to check that it's firing properly. Just whilst lying still, squeeze your glutes really hard. And once you've got that contraction, keep squeezing and then lift your leg up and lower it back down. Repeat this 10 times and then onto the other side. And you can play around with it a little bit because some people find it easier to actually activate their glute by having your leg or your knee bent and then still doing the same extension movement, but there's a slightly less of a long lever. This next test will flag up malfunctioning glute med and glute min as opposed to glute max. So you simply start by standing in front of a mirror with your hands on your hips. Check that they're level and they're on that anchor point. And from there, you're going to transfer your weight onto one side and then take the other knee that's not got the weight on up to 90 degrees. And the key point here is to look at the level or the position of your hands in the mirror and they should remain level. If you're finding that the lifted side is actually dropping, so the knee that's lifted is dropping that way, then it shows that your glutes on the opposite side aren't firing correctly. Well, you can then turn this into an activation exercise. So once you've got that control and a nice slow movement, you can make it more dynamic and more relevant to running. So you can add it in with an arm drive as though you were running and you're simply going to be pumping your arms 
arms with your knee. So if you do this 10 times, you'll find that that dynamic movement really makes it a little bit harder and gets that glute firing even more so. And then repeat it on the other side as well. Well, now you know whether your glutes are firing properly or not, you can go about working on how to strengthen them and get them really activated. And the two tests that we've just done can be developed further with the use of something like this, a physio band. So if you look at the prone lying exercise, you can simply put this around your knees. So you need it a little bit tighter than this, but you want to make sure that you keep your knees hip width apart. So as you then extend your hip, you'll be firing glute max, but also some of glute med as well, because you're gonna have to resist that pull inwards as well as that pull backwards. And then when it comes to the standing um, leg lift, you're gonna place it simply around your feet so you're stood on the band, and then you'll feel that resistance as you pull your knee up into hip flexion, but you'll also be resisting that inward rotation pull. So again, I'll be firing all of the glute muscles. Crab walks have become more popular recently and you might well have spotted people doing it in the gym. For this, you simply need a physio band of some sort and you want to plop it around either your ankles or just above your knees. And then for your starting position, you want your feet, hips and knees all facing forwards, sort of hip width apart, also there's tension on the band. And then you're going to get into a demi-squat position, so a nice bend in the knees. And simply from that, you're gonna carry on facing forwards so making sure that your hips stay nice and level and you're gonna take side steps to one side and once you've done 10 you're going to turn around and go in the other direction and the whole time during this you want to really focus on keeping them smooth and making sure your head doesn't bob up and down too much and once you've done 10 in both directions take a rest and you can repeat it once more or maybe twice and you really will start to feel the burn in your glutes and maybe you don't have enough space in your gym to do 10 steps in one direction and back again, or you simply want an alternative. Well, you can do this static, and if possible, again, I would suggest doing it in front of a mirror. So you're gonna have the same starting position into that demi-squat, and then from here, it often helps if you put your hands on your hips to so just check you're doing it correctly. You're gonna transfer the weight onto one side, and from there, you're gonna just take your leg simply out and away from you in that direction and I can feel that straight away. That's actually quite um, tough. It's more intense than the side steps. And you can do that five to 10 times on each leg. And if you're feeling up to it, repeat it once or even twice more. There is another variation to this exercise that will start to activate glute max a little bit more. So still the same starting position, weight transferred onto one leg with the band still around your ankles. And from here, instead of taking your leg purely out to the side, you're gonna take it out and back in a diagonal movement. And this, with this backwards extension, as well as that abduction movement, will fire up all three of the glutes. Obviously those previous exercises were aimed at activation, but they are going to cause some strengthening as well. So choose a selection of those and you want to do those first before you move on to these following exercises, which I've got, which are purely on strengthening. And again, you want to select a few from here. You can use a specific hip extensor or back extensor machine or even a physio ball. And you want to secure your feet or at least have them on the ground. And you're simply going to be folding in them in half, so basically at your hips. And once you start in that folded position, you just want to rest your hands lightly either side of your head and really think about engaging your core and keeping your spine in a nice neutral position because all of the movement should be happening at the hips, not in your lower back. And yes, it will engage a little bit of your back muscles to keep you there and it's going to be engaging your hamstrings as well, but ultimately you want to really focus on your glutes. So once you're in your starting position, think about squeezing your glutes, firing them up, and then predominantly using them to extend, so bringing your body up against gravity until you're in a straight line from your hips, your shoulders, and your knees, and making sure that you really are careful not to overextend. And I would say that if you've got any back issues, I would avoid this exercise, or at least go and do it with a professional so that they can make sure you're doing it correctly. Start off with this exercise as purely body weight, because you are working again gravity and aim for three lots of five reps. Increase the number of reps each week until you reach 10 and then you can think about adding in additional weight. Simply hold this weight close into your chest and keep the rest of the movement exactly the same. And this exercise will work a combination of your lower back and glutes like I mentioned but both of which are needed to work together when you're running. The weighted hip bridge is another exercise that seems to be gaining popularity in the gym and that's probably for the aesthetic reasons but it has also been long practiced by track runners as it seriously helps with running efficiency as it will engage your glutes and your hamstrings and it's basically a step up from the very simple and standard hip bridge. 
lie on your back with your knees bent, feet hip width apart. Engage your core and push your hips up towards the ceiling until there's a straight line from your shoulders to your knees, focusing on keeping your hips nice and level. You can then progress this to single leg hip bridges, really concentrating on keeping your hips parallel in this position. Start with three sets of five reps and you can then either increase the weight or increase the number of reps as you progress. This one's actually harder than it looks and it will work your hamstrings and your glutes simultaneously. So you need a physio ball and you're gonna start by lying on your back, rest your heels on the top of that ball and then lift your hips up towards the ceiling so you have a nice straight line that runs from your ankles all the way through to your shoulders. And once you're stable in that position, you can start to activate your muscles and you're going to simply pull your heels towards your bottom all the time trying to keep your shoulders and your torso nice and still. So really engaging those and then you're going to push away with the same amount of control. If you find this easy, then you can progress it to do a single leg action. So you're going to simply lift one leg off the ball and then one leg will be pulling back towards your bottom and away again. And this occasion, you really want to make sure that your hips stay nice and level all the way through the movement. I want to finish with a little bit of a disclaimer. We aren't here trying to get a Kim Kardashian or a J-Lo shaped derriere. We are, however, trying to get fully functioning glutes that are going to enable us to put all of our energy into simply moving ourselves forwards faster, more economically. And there are a huge variation of exercises out there. If you're unsure as to whether the ones you've chosen are activating your glutes, don't be afraid to simply have a feel. So put your hands on your bottom when you're doing the exercise and you'll soon know if it's tensing underneath and you should be getting that burn anyway. Well, do let me know what your favorite glute exercises are. You can do that in the comments section below and check out our other social channels on GTN and give us a like and a follow whilst you're there.